In today's video, we're going to work on the ultimate doublings exercise. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. Doublings on the Highland Bagpipes. We all want crisper, clearer, more accurate, more articulated doublings. And for those that might not know, a doubling on the pipes is where you go to a note with a G grace note, if possible, and then separate it with yet another grace note. And by doing that, you hear the note you land on twice, first emphasized with the G grace note, and then again separated with whichever grace note that doubling happens to use. For low G, A, B, and C, the separating grace note is a D, so it'd be a G grace note and a D grace note for all four of those doublings. For D, E, and F, it's the lowest available grace note that makes sense. So on a D, that'd be an E grace note, so G grace note, and then an E grace note. For an E, that would be a G grace note, and then an F grace note. And then for an F, it would be simply two G grace notes. One of the problems many people have with their doublings, however, is what I call the Highland Twiddle. And that's where the secondary grace note, the one that's separating it and truly making it a doubling if played correctly, comes too early or is too big. So for example, a C twiddle would be instead of a good, clear, so if that separating grace note is either too early or too big, it can make the middle grace note not appear, the C in the case of that C doubling or whatever note you're trying to create a doubling on. Also to note, high G doublings and high A doublings are played using different types of techniques, so they are not included in this. It is true that the high G doubling and the high A doubling have that note occurring twice, but the technique you use to get there is different, and there's a link to a playlist right up there that will help you with your high G and high A doublings, but that's not for this video. In the description below, there's a link to the free one-page PDF document you see here, so go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. So as we look at this document right here, the first thing you'll see is, where are the doublings, Matt? Well, to be honest, I wanted to approach this in a different way because people kind of have their own muscle memory built into what they do when they see a particular embellishment. So if you see a C doubling, an E doubling, whichever doubling might be giving you problems, or maybe all of them are giving you problems, when you see the embellishment written out, you're likely to go back into your old way of playing it. However, here we have the doublings written out as individual grace notes to real notes. Now they happen to be faster notes, in this case, 16th notes, but in doing so, it's gonna hopefully help break the scar tissue of however you might have been doing it wrong in the past. This exercise follows a very similar melodic formula as a previous video, how to improve your melodic fluidity, and a link to that video right up there. That one involved no grace notes, whereas this one has kind of alternating sequences of grace notes. Let's talk about it. So first we can see we have two examples of thirds. And what do I mean by thirds? I'm talking about the distance between the lowest note and the highest note in any given run of notes. In this case, we're starting on a B, going up to a C, and then to a D, and then we're gonna drop a third to go back to a B. But in this case, when we drop back down, we're gonna drop down with a G grace note into a B, and then separate it with a D grace note. That is a B doubling right there. But in this case, I wanna make sure that the two Bs are exactly the same length. I'm not looking to put it more on the front like we might with a proper doubling. This is about really building up the control and dexterity of your individual grace notes. And you're listening for the G going down into the B to be nice, crisp, and clear, not big and scoopy. It's really easy to get a, as I call it, kind of a hungry, hungry hippos kind of motion. We want it much smaller than that, much more controlled. And then we want to make sure that the D grace note we fire after that is the same length as best as we can make it. And not. You can see the second one, the D was both bigger, taller, longer. We don't want any of that. Then after this opened B doubling, if you will, we'll continue up to a C and a D, again, without any grace notes. Then we'll drop down to the B without a grace note. And then you can see the doubling has moved now to the C. So we'll go from B up to C with a G grace note and then separate that again with a D grace note. 
Some people find the degrist on C can be a little harder to snug down because the middle finger's floating. So this finger doesn't always want to close quite as crispy. So just kind of pay attention to that. Make sure you're not getting a big bloopy degrist note. Again, that was a little large on the way up. And then we head up to D without a grace note dropping again to B and then to C. And now we've moved the doubling full on to the D, the last note in the sequence. So you can see no doublings, doubling on the first note, doubling on the second note, doubling on the third note. And in this case, we're going C up to D doubling. So both pointer fingers up and then the top one immediately down. But now we'll use the E grace note to separate this particular doubling because that's how you play a D doubling. If you have an overly large E grace note that just doesn't want to snug down and be the size of your G grace note, you might want to consider your pinky position. I tend to hold mine up, other people point it down. I don't really care. There's nothing it really needs to do except get out of the way of making a good, clean E grace note. So if your E grace note's a little big and your pinky's up, think about tucking it and see if that helps snug it up or vice versa. If it's underneath and it feels it's a bit hard to move that finger quickly, try putting it in the air and trying it. I've seen pipers at the very highest level of this instrument play with their pinky up and down, so I'm pretty clear it doesn't really matter. It's what works for you in your world. So we're going to go ahead and give this line a try. I have a metronome set up here. I have it set up in 3-4 rather than 6-8. We're going to count each one of these groups as its own animal, one beat per note, until we get to those 16th notes. And then I'm going to do my best to equally, evenly divide this beat into two with the separating grace note. Again, it's not about trying to make it front loaded. We want to open these up, clear them up. We're trying to get all of that scar tissue out of there from poor doublings that I know we've all played in the past. And pick a speed that works for you where you can hit each note cleanly on the beat and evenly separate out the 16th notes into 50% of the beat and 50% of the beat. While we have the free one page version we'll be going over here today in this video, there is a full eight page version of this exercise that can really help hone in all of the ways doublings can occur in pipe music. The PDF is available by itself or it's available with play along MP3s in both the key of A for lower pitch practice channers like the Hardy Twist Trap Channer or B flat, which is what most older channers tended to be pitched at. So if you want MP3 files that you can use to play along with this exercise to make sure your timing is exactly where it needs to be, check that out. All right, on to line two. Now we're going to descend. This time we're starting on an E, descending to a D and then a C before then jumping up a third. Again, we're in the thirds section here to an E doubling. So C, G grace note up to E. That's a rather tricky one involving the lifting of three fingers, pointer, ring, and pinky, and then the closing of pointer and middle ring on the bottom to get a good crisp G grace note to E, and we'll separate that with the F grace note. Yes, that guy right there, the middle finger. Again, one that really only gets used in light music in E doublings. This is a great opportunity to really pay attention to that F grace note on its own and make sure it's the same size as best as you can do to the G grace note. Again, if they're coming out, it means the grace notes are firing too quickly. We need to get more separation. You definitely want to hear the E after the G grace note before you play that F grace note to separate. Then we'll walk down a D without a grace note to a C without a grace note, back up to an E without a grace note because we've moved the doubling now to the second note in the sequence, which is the D. So now we're going E, G grace note to D. This is one of the larger changes we can do on the instrument. We're going to be lifting the top pointer and the bottom three fingers that are on before lowering all the fingers required for a D and then a nice crisp E grace note to make a D doubling. Then we'll walk down to a C, back up to an E. Avoid the crossing noise right there as you're going from C up to E. Make sure that these do not come down before this has gotten out of the way. Then again down to D and finally D down to C doubling, top pointer up, both pointers down, then that D grace note. Let's give this line a try. Again, in the full eight page document, there is one full page dedicated to the thirds alone, all of the various combinations with sequential notes like this. But for now, we're going to move on to fourths. 
So again, it's called a fourth because that is the distance between the starting note and the ending note and the interval you're gonna jump down when you go back and repeat the cycle. In this case, going from an E down to a B. So we're gonna go B, C, as we did before, but rather than going up to the D, we're gonna skip the D and go straight to E in this case, jumping around a little bit. So we have an E, G grace note to B, that's gonna be the top pointer and bottom ring finger up, then lowering the two top fingers crisply, and then separating with a D. Then walk back up to a C, switch to the E, back to B, up now to C doubling from B, which we've already talked about, before heading up to an E again, then back down to a B without a grace note, C, and then C to E doubling. And again, we already did the C to E doubling at the beginning of the second line of the abridged exercise here, so we won't review it. Let's give this line a go. Now for the descending version of this, we're going to start on F, switch to D. So we have a nice big switch right there, another chance for a crossing noise to occur. So we have to get the bottom hand out of the way before these top ones close, or we will hear that low that we don't want. So avoid the crossing noise there. F to D, then one finger down to C. Then from here, we're going to go up to an F doubling. So we're getting the highest doubling yet that we've played and the highest doubling that is available to us using this kind of technique. C, G grace note to F, so you're gonna lift the pinky and all three on the top before lowering the top pointer and then the middle and ring on the bottom to get to the F and then another G grace note to separate the F into two. Then switch to D, down to C without a grace note, back up to F without a grace note because again, we've moved the doubling now to the next note and this is another rather tricky change which is why I included it here. F to D doubling, this is a tricky one. For many people, you're gonna actually have to lower your pinky first so you can get the other fingers out of the way. That lowering of the pinky doesn't make much of a noise. Don't get me wrong, there is a little warble in there when you do it, but if you're gonna do this slowly to build up the dexterity you need, you're gonna have to likely hold that so that you don't drop the channer because it's just balancing in your thumbs. Because you think about it, if you're on F going to D with a G grace note, you gotta lift the G grace note and all three on the bottom to get to the D. And hey, look ma, no hands. Um, that can be quite difficult, but if the pinky is there and you have it supported in your mouth, it can go a long way to not dropping the channer. So this one might take you a little bit of time if you're just starting out with some of these grace note changes. And then it's just the E grace note as we've already done in several others to separate the D. Then we drop to C, back up to F, D, and then D to C doubling. Let's give this line a go. Hi everybody, my name is Beth and I'm here to tell you why you should do the ultimate doubling exercises. I've been playing the pipes for a very long time. I actually retired from piping for about 20 years while my boys were growing up and I just came back to piping. I really needed to brush up on all of my embellishments and doublings are in every tune that we play. The ultimate doubling exercise really helps to get your doublings crisp and even. I had bad habits before I had retired from piping years ago and so I really needed to improve my uh, doublings this time around because I want to compete. If you're like curious or if you're wondering does it work, it does. My, my doublings have improved so much doing the exercises every single day. I am wishing you all the very best. Be well. Bye bye. All right, onwards to fifths. I'm gonna just dive in and give this line a go and see if afterwards there's anything I particularly need to review. But again, it's called a fifth because the interval between the lowest note and the highest note is now five. So we're just gonna start on A, up to C, then up to E, and then down to a low A doubling. Not a lot of folks uh, learn low A doublings in the early days, but they're, I don't wanna say common, but they're certainly not all that unusual in more advanced pipe music. And again, it's a G and D grace note for that low A doubling. Uh, 
So with the fifths, while we skipped a note and then skipped a note going up, there is all of the possible intervals here. You can skip one note and then four notes. You can skip four notes and then just go up one note. And figuring out how to properly play your doublings from each one of these different note intervals can be super important to your playing. So rather than skip and skip going down, we're actually going to, in the second line of the fifths exercise here, we're going to go down by just one and then skip down four to get that full interval before we then jump back up from B, back up to an F doubling. So B, G grace note to F, and then a second G grace note to F. And again, as before, we're going to move that doubling over by one each time. And you want as much as possible to have each doubling sound the same, even though you may well be using a different finger to separate the two notes each time. Your audience should think you're basically doing the same thing to create that illusion of separation that we do with our grace notes. Sixth. That's a big, big interval now. We're going to start on low G, skip up to D, then E, and then drop all the way to a low G doubling, which is even less common than a low A doubling, but certainly one that you want to be working on. So E down to low G doubling again. We're going to lift, in this case, just one finger, drop everything, and then D grace note to separate that G. If you find your practice channel shuts down when you do the G grace note to a low G, it's likely you're blowing too hard. Think about reducing the amount of breath pressure going through the channer until it doesn't shut down on you. Then after that low G doubling, we'll skip up to a D, then that cross to E. Again, make sure you get that ring finger out of the way before these come down. We don't want the noise in there. No cross. Then we head right back to low G. And again, we've moved the doubling now to D and then switch up to E. Then we're going to drop back to low G, D, and then add the E doubling. Let's give it a go now. And now the descending exercise here. We're going to start on F, go down just one to E, and then lower to low A, back up to F doubling. Again, putting the doubling on the first note of each of the notes in the run. Then an E without a doubling, an A without a doubling, back up to an F without a doubling, but now it's on the second note. So again, you can see the doubling just kind of moves over. Let's give this line a go. With some doublings, I'm already kind of okay. But when I see a melody and I play one that I don't know before and I hit something that I hadn't encountered, I feel like I'm hitting a speed bump and my fingers just kind of refuse to obey. Um, using the exercises helps me to look at the possibilities of there are and just not get into the rut of all these familiar ones. And so I'm looking forward to exploring these even further. And then finally, seventh. This is the largest interval you can actually do between low G and F. That is the interval of a seventh. So we're going to both start the ascending runs on G and we're going to end the descending runs on a low G as well. Again, this is just an abridged one page version of this. There's a full eight page version linked below along with play along files you can add to the purchase if you want to be able to, again, have files to play along with to make sure your timing is good, clean and accurate. Let's try the first line of the sevenths here. And then finally, for this abridged exercise, we have sevenths going down. We're going to start on an F, down to an E, and then down to low G before you head back up to F. So the trick there, make sure as you're heading back from low G to F that the pinky comes along. For beginning players in particular, it's really easy when you go from low G to a top hand note to forget about this finger because it doesn't really make any noise, but we want to make sure we're using the proper fingering at all times. Second line of the sevenths descending. Well, there you go, everybody. A great exercise that will not only help with the fluid movement of your fingers, there's a lot of things going on in here that don't involve grace notes at all that can really improve that aspect of your playing. But of course, most importantly, 
a great way to open up, clean your doublings, make sure the individual grace notes, the grace note that starts the doubling as well as the one that creates the separation between the two notes is good, clean, accurate, and the same size as that initial G grace note. After a few weeks of going through either the abridged one-page version of this document or the full eight-page version available, again, link below, you'll find that your doublings start really improving in all of your tunes. My patrons and students have had access to this for several weeks now, and I've been amazed at how much they've improved. I am very uh, happy that it's gotten the results from so many people that it has. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something on the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. If you're enjoying the content here and want to help support the channel, go ahead and head over to my Patreon, and a special shout out to Mr. Michael Dingus, my number one supporter. You'll see names now of folks scrolling up. These are folks that contribute monthly to the channel. You often get early access to videos and other perks, so go head over to the Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this lovely hoodie that's available in both black as well as red and white. There's also the prescription bagpipe line of products, so go over, check out the merch store, and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Again, consider getting the full eight-page version of this document and maybe even adding along those MP3 play-along files. But until next time, I'm Matt Willis. Cheers.